objects such as communication satellites that are placed in low Earth orbit will eventually return to Earth, mostly burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Why don't they stay up there for longer? And how can they be safely brought back to Earth? Well, space is generally considered a vacuum, but even in the depths of space, it isn't a perfect vacuum. And the closer you get to a planet, the less perfect that vacuum becomes. And around a planet with a relatively thick atmosphere like the Earth, the vacuum around the planet is even less absolute. The atmosphere around the Earth doesn't have a kind of clear dividing line. Just as you go higher and higher up, the atmosphere becomes thinner and thinner, with less molecules of gas for a given volume. Not only that, at high altitudes, the amount of air actually varies considerably depending on whether the side of the Earth you're on is facing towards or away from the sun. Our atmosphere is constantly being buffeted by the solar wind. Mostly the atmosphere is protected by the magnetosphere around the Earth. At high altitudes, it's not actually a complete protection. If the atmosphere on the side of the Earth facing the sun is being pushed down towards the ground, whereas the side facing away from the sun is the atmosphere streaming away from the Earth with a vast invisible comet tail. The outer atmosphere represents a problem for any object orbiting the Earth. In order to orbit the Earth, an object like a satellite must continue to travel within certain limits of velocity. These vary with the altitude that the object is trying to maintain. However, if the velocity is too fast, the object will escape the Earth's gravitational pull and fly off into space. If it's too slow, the object falls back to Earth. Hence, when a satellite is placed into orbit, the height and the velocity carefully measured to keep that satellite exactly where it's supposed to be. But as the satellite orbits the Earth, occasionally it bumps into molecules of gas and just really occasionally other tiny items in space. This results in drag and skin friction on the surface of the satellite. The lower the object is orbiting the Earth, the more often this will happen. Additionally, the object has large flat solar panels supplying power for the satellite the amount of drag will increase dramatically. Satellites in low orbit of course will experience this more than objects higher up. Additionally, those in low orbits also pass through the variation in density of the extreme upper atmosphere caused by the Earth's atmospheric tail. This brings additional problems. Now, the amount that even a large satellite in low orbit slows down by is really relatively small, but over a period of years, nothing's done to correct this decrease in velocity will mean that eventually the orbit will start to decay and the satellite may fall back to Earth. You could of course attach some rockets or some other form of thrust to the satellite to help it maintain the orbit. Eventually this will run out of fuel. Sometimes if you could set up a ship like a shuttle to give it a little boost. And the cost of that would like to be extremely expensive. Any satellite that's actually been orbiting the planet for years that those experiencing orbital decay probably also had some kind of minor problems with microscopic collisions and other issues relating to wear and tear operating in a hostile environment of space. Technology on board satellites now also like to be out of date, may no longer be suitable for the original intended purpose of the satellite. Putting this all together means it's normally far more efficient to allow the satellite to fall back to Earth and send up a replacement than it is to actually extend the life of a satellite. Now, when small objects fall to Earth, the speed at which they move through, through the atmosphere normally means they burn up before they reach the surface. All they leave behind is some relatively harmless scattered dust particles. However, the size and shape of artificial satellites means that some of the object might make it back to the Earth relatively intact, especially some parts are made from strong substances like titanium and carbon fiber represents a couple of problems. First of which is the issue of what it might hit on the ground. Now whilst the chances of hitting a person are extremely remote, still such a tiny possibility of this might happen. However the object could also strike a building or another structure, or it might start a fire when it hits the ground. As well as the problem that some of the chemicals used in the satellite might actually contaminate the local area. So in general, you want to bring the satellite down in an uninhabited part of the world. The problem here is that you're, when you bring a satellite back to Earth, the descent through the atmosphere isn't really a very controlled one. The regular shape can mean the path the object follows on the way down can be fairly erratic. In general, the only control you have about the satellite's descent is a small rocket fired at the start 
the orbital decay. From then on, it's a rather unruly glider without a pilot on board. It can end up hundreds of miles from its intended target. The target area needs to be something rather large, like a desert or an ocean. However, there's still another issue with the satellite. Quite often the owners of the satellite, even if it's a fairly old one, really don't want anyone else getting hold of it, or even part of it. It's going to be because of the technology involved in the satellite, Potentially, people might actually discover the actual purpose of the satellite. This means that generally, rather, no one's ever able to find the remains of the satellite. And even though deserts are mostly empty areas of land, not totally vacant, a crashed satellite might stand out against a back desert backdrop, making it relatively easy to find if somebody was actually looking for it. This leaves us with the ocean, more specifically, something known as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility. It's an area of open ocean between New Zealand, South America and Antarctica. The nearest inhabited island is over 1,500 miles from the central point. It's known as Point Nemo after the captain in the novel by Jules Verne. It also it translates from Latin meaning no man. If you're at ship at Point Nemo, it's probable that the nearest human being to your location is somebody actually on the International Space Station orbiting overhead rather than anyone on the surface of the Earth. So if a satellite is being brought down targeting Point Nemo, you can virtually certain that the satellite is hitting open ocean and not harming anyone when it hit lands. Additionally, if it's far away from major shipping lanes and the water is fairly deep, once it's in the water, it's almost impossible for anyone to recover any of the satellite. So Point Nemo and the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility where old satellites go to die.